Hi gamers, are you ready to build that perfect house? Well, let's review the game, Dream Home. Check it out. Setup for the game is fairly easy. Every player is going to get a player board here, and then you're going to deal out the cards here. Room cards will be here, and then little additive cards will be here at the top. And of course, this little marker here is the first player marker. And now, in a two player game, it's going to start off where someone's going to eliminate one of these other columns here. But in a regular game, three or four players, you're going to have all the columns available. Now, the game starts off where each player, in order, is going to pick one of these columns to choose and put in their home. And what you're doing, you're building rooms, uh, stacking them up. So, for instance, right now, I can only place rooms here in here. But the only two types of rooms I can place down here are cards who have the darker borders around them. So for instance, I could get a garage and put it there. I could not put my living room down here in the basement. No, it has to be a darker color card. And as you see here, if you add on to it, if I have another, if I just have one garage there, it's worth zero points. If I have two garages, this becomes four points at the end of the game. So that's kind of interesting. I could go with that, or I could maybe go with this workshop, which automatically gives me two points and lets me build on this floor as well. And of course, once I put a card here, I may build on the second floor and so on. So that's how you would build your house as you go along. Now, on top of getting that bottom room card, you're also going to get the adjoining top card. And that could be a range of different things. It could be a roof card. There are several different color roof cards in the game. There's purple, there's red, there's brown, there's orange. Uh, you, the game will give you bonus points if you have all of the same color of the same roof at the end of the game. Uh, there are other little roof cards like this one that gives you an extra point because it has a window. You see it gets an extra point. So you've got this card to actually give you an extra point at the end of the game. And of course, if you have... The game will tell you here on points to score, end points here, it says three points for a complete roof, meaning four cards. Five extra points if that roof is of one uniform color. So you can get a bonus of eight if they're all the same color. But that's just how scoring goes with roofs. Now, other things you can get is items for your house. In fact, this one's a tree house. So I take the tree house token and I would attach it to my home or just place it there. It is worth one point in the game. At the end of the game, I would get a bonus point. There's also cards like this concrete mixer architect. There's people or items that can help you either rearrange or kind of cheat the rules while you're building your home. Now, this token here, of course, first player token. So if I was to pick this, I could also pick up the first player token and I would be the first player the entire game until someone else came around and picked this column too because they want to be first player. And of course, I don't have to tell you what the advantages of being first player are because you get to pick first. <laughs> and so you get the room of your choice. As you can see, as you're stacking rooms together, they can really pile up. So if I had three living rooms on either side, that'd be nine points. Now, living rooms have to match together. All these cards to get these bonus points, they have to sit right next to each other. So if I had a kitchen here and a living room there, well, my living room cannot go three cards. It can go two, it can put one here, but I can't put a living room here and say, oh, that's nine. No, they all have to connect as well to get those extra points there. So basically you're going through the game and you're trying to build up your house and you're going through this entire stack of cards. Now at the end of it, then you're gonna go to final scoring. And of course they come with these neat little hard cardboard final scoring points here and it tells you points on the roof and then home functionality it says hey on top of adding up all your points for the rooms you get you get three points for having a bathroom on each floor so if I had a bathroom on the first and second floor here that would garner me three extra points if I had three points for having a bathroom kitchen and a bedroom so if I have the three necessary rooms <laughs> kitchen bathroom and bedroom in my home I would get an additional three points points. Now, this game also has the coolest tiebreaker in the history of board games. If there is a tie, which we have had ties, then you're going to go to something really cool, and it's in the artwork. And let me just tell you how smart this artwork is. I just noticed this while setting up the game. This is in the playroom. This is a closet or wardrobe. And what is that? There's a door leading to, it looks like, another world. 
Now, let me see if I can get that to focus. Now, that is pretty friggin' sweet. Is that Narnia? I have never, I've played this game several times. I've just never noticed the little inside jokes they put in the game. But one of the coolest things is you get to look for the tiebreaker. How many kids can you find in the pictures? As you see, here is a kid hiding under the bed. You can see his feet popping out. You may see a head or an arm or a leg. You may see stuff like that. You have to look into the art and see how many kids you have. Whoever has the most kids would win the tiebreaker. But overall, that's the game. Final thoughts. What do I think about the game? Well, you know what? I saw this game. I said, well, that looks nice. And I'm always looking for games that I think my wife would enjoy. Now, as of this video, she hasn't played this yet. Uh, my little nephews played it. They thought it was her game. They thought it was a game for her. As you see, there's a little girl here on the cover. And uh, so it looks like it goes for girls. And yes, for little girls, even older girls, older women will love this. Uh, guys, I don't know. I'm kind of afraid to bring it out to my board game group. I don't know if they would take it seriously. Uh, but for children's games, light games, or games I play with my wife, I think this would be a good pick here. Like I said, my wife hasn't played it yet. Uh, one of the complaints, I had the same complaint on another game I reviewed called Bizarre. They use these paper score counters that you write and then throw away. E, I don't like this. This is only temporary. So, I, of course, I don't use mine. Uh, but you can, you can keep score fairly easy in the game. I don't think you even need that score counter in it. Uh, another complaint I've heard about the game is they like it. Everyone who plays it likes it, but they think it would get repetitive and old after a while. And yes, probably so. I don't play it, you know, back to back to back that much. Uh, but when I do play it, I always have fun. The artwork is really ingenious. Like I said, that was the first time I'd ever noticed that that wardrobe had a door that led into Narnia or wherever. I thought that was funny. And we did have a tiebreaker once where we had to find, it's like almost playing Where's Waldo, and find kids hiding in your home for the tiebreaker. I think that's really smart because at first you're not even looking for kids. I mean, maybe now you are while you're looking through them. Maybe that would be a deciding factor on whether to get a card or not. But it's really a neat little fun game. Uh, if they add expansions to it, you know, I heard there's like a Christmas expansion, mini expansion. I, I don't know where it is. I think it's hard to get. Hopefully it'll show up on the BGG store one day. If so, I'll definitely buy it because a little bit more flavor in there would be nice. And they can add different rooms to it or add on to the house. Expansions may really benefit this game. As it is, yes, there'd probably be some limited gameplay as you played it a couple of times. If you're someone like me who has a ton of games though, uh, this may be a good game for you because you can bring it out every once in a while. It never gets old, and it's still a fun game. My biggest complaint about it is the price. It is very high. I got this with a group of games, so it didn't cost as much. But still, on its own, the price is ooh, a little too much for not enough game in the box. Uh, so it's hard for me to say whether I recommend this or not. Uh, if, the, if the price drops on it, then yes. I think now it's going for 40 It should be going for like 25 Maybe 30, maybe just 25. I don't know. 20 bucks is a great game. Uh, 25, I'd pay 25 for it too. But uh, anyway, the game is fun, a little overpriced, needs some expansions, but there is a lot of promise in this game. So I, for one, I'm glad I have it. I do have a board game night every blue moon where it's nothing but uh, females and they all gather with my wife and they all play different games. And you better rest assured, this is the next game that's coming out to hit the table next time we do that. All right, gamers, that is all the time I have for now. Until next time, game on.